Hello everybody, welcome back for another video, hope you're all doing well, and that you're all having an incredible day in what very well might be very large news, and I say that only because this news was everywhere, and I don't mean like slightly everywhere, like a lot of times we get news and like it's very popular and the news ends up being like a couple of different places, but for some reason this news was everywhere, and I mean everywhere, 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 like I, for the sake of not having 38,000 different tabs up here, I decided to only have a couple for this. I mean, every single place you can type in Ripple $200 million, it's on every single website that anywhere even remotely closely talks about finance. Blockchain based payments firm Ripple has raised 200 million US dollars in a Series C funding round led by alternative asset investment firm known as. Tetragon, Japan's SBI Holdings and venture capital firm Root66 Ventures also participated. Ripple announced on Friday, they said, we are in a strong financial position to execute against our vision. As others in the blockchain space have slowed their growth or even shut down, we have accelerated our momentum and industry leadership throughout 2019. This was said by Brad Garlinghouse. The investment firm, the investment will allow the firm to further draw near uh, new international talent and better serve customers and partners, the firm said the new stakeholders will provide further invaluable industry insight and expertise as Ripple grows its business, according to the new announcement. Highlighting what is called the strongest year of growth to date, Ripple said its Ripple Net Payments Network grew in 2019 to over 300 clients. It also partnered with MoneyGram, taking a near 10% stake in the remittance firm as part of the deal. MoneyGram will utilize Ripple's products for cross-border settlements. I, this was everywhere. Something that they don't really have, and I noticed only a couple of places were talking about it as well. Um, you, you, you may also be able to find these as well if you type in Ripple $10 billion. Apparently, this $200 million round of funding that they got from et cetera, et cetera, allowed their company Ripple to be worth over $10 billion US dollars. And the only places I really saw any type of hyper negativity against the fact that Ripple itself is worth $10 billion were from exclusively Bitcoin-centric uh, websites who were talking about, is it fair to have a blockchain company worth this much? Is it fair to have a so-and-so? We, we never get those discussions like, is it fair that Bitcoin is worth over 150 billion, what, what was it, $200 billion as a market cap? We never get those discussions. It's only because it has to do with Ripple that everyone is up in arms in some sort of way. So the other, I guess, major important part is, is that Ripple itself is now apparently just the company, not the token itself worth 10 billion dollars and what this is going to lead to and exactly what's going to happen there's a lot of stuff um we're getting a lot of there was something garlinghouse said that he sees 2020 being the brightest year for all of cryptocurrency because of the new funding and the new round of stuff like that this news was everywhere it it, it, it got to the point where i i i saw the news in in the very beginning and i was like oh that's good for them and then no matter where I clicked, no matter where I went, no matter what I tried to find, this was everywhere. So this is kind of the news of the hour. You may not like Ripple, but suck it up because this is exactly what it is. Here's the actual blog post from Ripple. It says Ripple caps record year with $200 million Series C funding. It is, I mean, listen, have any of you ever raised $200 million in a round of funding? It's kind of impressive. Uh, it's, they need to kind of put their money <laughs> where their mouth is at this point. If you are worth $10 billion as a company, you need to show it, especially for next year. There's a lot that has not happened and it's not just from Ripple. There are many cryptocurrency projects who said that they would do stuff or have stuff or execute stuff or be able to show stuff in 2019 that has not happened. So I am going to say as the final thought, uh, let's hope that 2020 for Ripple is an incredibly strong year. Uh, I mentioned other cryptocurrency companies before who have wasted 100 million, have spent 10 million on this, have done so and so and so, have paid, was it 14 million for a dinner? <laughs> All those other ridiculous things. You got to make it work at this point. But like I said, news of the hour Ripple raises 200 million. They're worth 10 billion. And without further ado, let us move on. So in news that should have been incredibly obvious to all of us, but I think none of us really took to mind, the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office last month 
rejected three trademark applications sought in connection with the cryptocurrency platform Tron after American media giant Disney filed notices of opposition and argued that approval would lead to brand confusion. Tron Foundation's China partner, Raybo Technology, first filed its request to trademark Tron, Tron Network, and Tronics in February of 2018 when Disney pushed back with former filings in August. Raybo Technology failed to respond in the USPTO favored in favor of Disney. <laughs> there we go. Thus, Raybo's application was rendered abandoned in the first few weeks of November. Crypto outlet Decrypt reported the news on Friday. In its notice of opposition, Disney contended that the proposed trademarks would infringe on the corporate's long history of using and Leipz li Leipzig licensing its firm's films series of the same name. Indeed, Disney has built a whole franchise, like I mentioned before in another video, around its 1982 film called Tron, including a sequel movie, an animated TV series, video games, musical recordings, as well as a line of merchandise. Like I said, this should have been fairly obvious to us. Maybe be, uh, bleh, having seen the word Tron, this is why I mentioned before in the other video, I said when I first saw that there was a cryptocurrency or a coin called Tron, I was like, that's... That's definitely going to be a joke. No one's going to take that serious. And lo and behold, a lot of people, life is weird. So um, I'm not sure why they thought they would be able to slip under Disney's eyes and be able to tr try to trademark the word Tron. I'm pretty sure the word Tron is already trademarked by Disney. And I'm going to go on the assumption that they probably Disney has probably also trademarked Tron Network, Tronix, and a whole bunch of other stuff within the United States as well, uh, just to stop any type of confusion. It's not just me, right? I'm, I'm not the only one who, like, when I heard the name, I was like, that's a that's a really weird name for, like, it could have been named anything else. I, I wonder if Justin Sun sat in a room watching the movie and was like, got it, know what I'm going to name my coin. Because it's, 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 no one thinks of the name Tron. It's a very specific thing. Like, try to make up a really weird name for something in your head, like Kukwakalix. And then there's a movie that came out in the 80s called Kukwakalix, and they had Kukwakalix toys and Kukwakalix shoes and Kukwakalix hats. And someone's like, our cryptocurrency is called Kukwakalix. It's like, that's a very specific name. No, no one thinks of the word Tron. It's not a real human word. Here's the actual original article right here. It says, Disney halts Justin Sun's attempt to trademark Tron. I don't know why they tried in the first place, uh, but bless their little hearts because for some reason they thought that they could. If you've never uh, watched, a, and, I, and, I, and I mentioned documentaries a lot, if you've never watched a documentary on like trademarking and how serious it gets and how, who was the person? Oh gosh, it was a couple of months ago. Someone tried to trademark the term Taco Tuesday. And I was like, what? Like, you, if you've ever had a Taco Tuesday, you know it's in every school, it's everywhere, rather on the western, northern part of the world. Um, anyway, I think people are always trying to slip under the radar, try to make money in some ridiculous way, but um, good for them. Let's move on. Who would, who would try to, why would you, okay, let's go. Next up. The U.S. taxman's most recent crypto guidance is sowing confusion, you don't say. According to a letter from eight congressmen published on Friday. According to a letter penned by representatives, those are a lot of names, I'm not reading out of those, of uh, the IRS's latest guidelines clarify some aspects of the tax treatment for cryptocurrencies but leaves much to be desired. Several of the congressmen who signed the letter including Emmer Soto, Foster, Schweikert, are members of the Congressional Blockchain Caucus, a formal group of lawmakers who advocate for blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies. Friday's letter was first shared by industry think tank Coin Center. Sure, why not? The IRS published guidance around taxing cryptocurrency holdings in October, addressing cost basis and forks too long. That was October. My gosh, that was... It feels like it was like last week. Uh, two long-standing questions the cryptocurrency community has had, not really. Um, however, the new guidance raised a number of new questions, particularly around airdrops and unwanted forks. That is the most uh, it's, it's the most important thing in the entire world. There was also no de minimis exemption for small purchases such as a cup of coffee. 
Write his letter pointed to these unwanted forks and airdrops as one of the major of concern, noting that the current guidance appears to suggest individuals are liable for taxes on any cryptocurrency they gain as a result of a hard fork or airdrop, regardless of whether or not they're aware they receive these cryptocurrencies. That, my friends, is the most important part in the entire world. The entire idea was, and has been for quite a long amount of time, and uh, hats off to those countries who realized, if it's not your fault, you shouldn't pay for it. It pretty much came down to the fact that if you sold your cryptocurrencies, you had performed a taxable event, and therefore you would be taxed on it. If you had purchased cryptocurrencies, there's no taxable event. It's the same as you buying something, you know, the whole deal. You bought it. It's not a problem. The issue with cryptocurrencies is that the IRS stated if someone or something or the coin that you're holding, let's say you hold Bitcoin, and this person over here decides to make Bcash, Okay, you, you didn't choose that. And that person over there decides to make Bitcoin gold. You also didn't decide that. That person over there decides to make Bitcoin cash Satoshi's vision. Well, let's look at that. Three new coins have dropped from the heavens into your pocket, but you didn't choose them. Uh, normally, when you invest, you choose the investment. You pay the money for the investment. Um, and that's typically, normally, how things go. So what ends up happening to you if someone maliciously forks Bitcoin or this coin or that coin, you then have to pay taxes on it even if you did not fork it yourself. That is ridiculous, which means there was another article before that we were talking about as this came out and all the way in October, apparently. What if there's a person? What if Bitcoin takes off? What if Bitcoin is like, woo, super crazy. Everyone says Bitcoin. Bitcoin's a lot of money, yada, yada, yada. And someone out of nowhere decides I'm going to fork the protocol 15 times and airdrop it onto every single person who was holding the number one coin, Bitcoin. Well, guess what? You have now then a product of 15 different taxable situations, none of which you asked for, none of which is your fault, and that you now all have to pay money on. The same exact thing with airdrop. The, the thing typically was is that if you were holding a certain cryptocurrency, you would be airdropped other coins, but it's not your fault. You, you can't control what other company is like. Yeah, if you're holding this coin, you're going to get a thousand. Remember, remember that entire thing that we had before where it was all these coins being airdropped on people and people like, I don't want those. And they were reselling them for like Ether and stuff like that. And then the other point pretty much being, um, how has nearly, nearly every other major country realized or rather have... It's some type of an exemption if you are buying very small purchases with cryptocurrency. If you're buying something under the 100 US dollar level, go for it. You're not being taxed at all. Why if someone is buying a cup of coffee, a stick of gum, do people buy, a, a, no, like sticks of gum, you know what I'm talking about. Um, a packet of cigarettes, anything. Why is that a taxable event? You are not being taxed. If you hand over $5 for something in the store, that you, you get a sales tax, but you're not being taxed exclusively on, like, you don't write on your taxes, I bought something for $5 earlier this year. It's nonsensical. So, I personally, me personally, I don't think this is going to be resolved anytime soon. It took, what was it, six years for them to give this clarity on taxes. Good luck. I, it'll be at least the year 2028. Bitcoin will be a million dollars per coin, and they'll be like, okay... If you buy an actual cup of coffee, you don't get taxed. It's going to take them forever and a day to actually uh, figure this out. Oh, the other point being as well, uh, for those of you who don't know, I apologize for this shock to the system. Uh, on the tax forms this year, the IRS is going to ask every single U.S. citizen if you have purchased cryptocurrencies. Why that is their business? Who knows? But they're going to ask every single person and um, once again planes exist uh visas exist you can move to other countries that also exist uh good luck to them because this is going to this is going to cause so much confusion that they're going to be forced to do something but part of the problem is that when they're forced to actually do this it's going to be a cluster you know the second word for that um the fact that when you have politicians and lawmakers asking the irs to do something correctly you know that behind the scenes there's actual friction going on because they're like just give us proper anything but um that doesn't appear to be happening anytime soon here's the actual letter or the pdf of the letter right here it says congress of the united states washington dc 
20515 and then it goes on cryptocurrencies open blockchains you all know the deal let's move on next up japanese financial services giant sbi has partnered with germany's second largest stock exchange Börse stuttgart group to promote the adoption of digital assets for those of you i'm pretty sure those names rung a bell in your head specifically SBI will invest an undisclosed amount in two digital asset-focused subsidiaries of Börse Stuttgart Groups, Börse Stuttgart Digital Exchange, BSDEX, and Börse Stuttgart Digital Ventures. This was reported by Cointelegraph Japan on the 20th of December. BSDEX is a new cryptocurrency exchange venture launched by Börse Stuttgart Group in September of 2019, while Börse Stuttgart, I'm tired of saying that word, Digital Ventures is the parent company of Soa Labs, a firm that developed crypto trading app Bison. According to an official announcement from SBI, the conglomerate has partnered with that group to jointly build a blockchain-based digital asset financial ecosystem and promote digital demand for digital assets in Europe and Asia. Yoshitaka Katao, that also rang a bell in a couple of people's ears, President and Representative Director of SBI Holdings said that in order to enable a financial ecosystem for digital assets, the top priority for SBI is to find a trusted global financial partner. He said, we will work with them in the digital asset related business of the SBI group and other businesses to create digital asset demand worldwide, end quote. Did you get it? I know some people did. This is uh, SBI is one of the largest, if not the largest bank in Japan. I've seen both said, I've seen people screaming to me in the comment section that they're not the largest bank, that they are the largest bank. They're one of the most known banks within Japan. Got it. SBI, the head of SBI, his name is Yoshitaka Katao. Him and other SBI subsidiaries are obsessed with XRP. And I don't mean slightly obsessed. I mean like they really, really love it. There were reports in 2017 and the beginning of 2018 that I think... SBI itself also owns a large fraction of the Ripple company itself. I can substantiate those claims, however, that appears to be what it is. So, Börse Stuttgart, one of the largest stock exchanges, if not one of two stock exchanges within second, yeah, Germany's second largest stock exchange, has now partnered with SBI to bring forward the top priority of moving crypto assets forward. Did you get it? SBI is obsessed with XRP. They partner with the Germans, second largest stock exchange, and one can only assume this is probably going to heavily focus on Bitcoin and XRP. That is all an assumption. I mean, however, over the last 28 months, Google it. Every time SBI has been in the news, it's about how much they love XRP, how much XRP is going to $10, how much XRP is going to do this, how they're excited about XRP, everything they do. They even just mentioned recently that they're going to give their um, shareholders dividends in XRP. They didn't say Bitcoin. They didn't say Ether. They didn't say any other coin. It's been exclusively XRP. So one can only assume that things are going to potentially work out well for XRP in this partnership. No one knows. But it's all speculation, obviously. But I mean, yeah, here's the actual article right here. I do not read Japanese, but this is the originally quoted article about this all happening. There's a man opening his chest and money is falling out. Why that's happening to him? I don't know. Maybe he's rich at heart. See what I did there? It didn't work out, but you understood. And to finish things off, the hype around ICOs or initial coin offerings may have quieted down in the States, but France seems to have or be taking a newfound approach. Interest? Sure, why not? On the 17th of December, France's financial regulator, the Autorité des Marchés Financiers, granted the country's first approval for an ICO application. The offering came from the company is called French ICO. Not joking. French ICO, a company that has developed a platform for funding projects using cryptocurrency. The firm is the first to be whitelisted and a notice has been posted on the AMF website. Sure. Reuters reported in July 
that the AMF was in talks with three or four candidates for ICOs, and there could be more on the way. While French ICO is the first company to receive approval, this support will remain valid until the end of the subscription period, which is scheduled for the first of, why would you give them like half a year? which is scheduled for the 1st of June, 2020. Who does that? The AMF website also notes that although approval is optional, ICOs are still considered legal in France without approval. Only those public offerings that have received the AMF approval may be marketed directly to the public in France. Sure, why not? This was also major news. Um, apparently, a company called French ICO has been granted authority to list ICOs within France. Yeah. I, I don't, I mean, much of the ICO market has plundered? No, fallen apart. Uh, the news now is STOs and IEOs, initial exchange offerings. I mean, sure, I'm pretty sure there's definitely, I'm, I'm certain there's definitely a market for stuff like this out there. But like, this was also major news that, it, that France was like, yeah, you can do what you've already been doing. And everyone was like, woo, we can do what we were doing before. So... Um, good to them, French ICO company. Please help us create more coins on the market than we already have. As always, sorry for screaming. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Shoop, shoop, diddy wop, hummer, hummer, a wang dang. Anytime Fitness, Monk's Corner Staff, Ting Tang, Walla Walla Bing Bang, Semi Boucha, Body McBoatface, Yes to Crypto, Miller Hitch Test Every Day, and Cow Skips That Leg Day, Minting Coins, Jeremy Fox, Jim Gardner, Anthony Charles, Nick Mangialavori, Paxis, Crypto and Beer Shipmate, Vlad the Impaler, Richie Rich the Third, Nick Kanaya, Setsuna, Damien, Nicholas Renner, One Piece, One Love, Cryptopolis, Crypto Artist, Cold D3D, Strange Radio Central Mechanic, Miluizi, Adobo, Bank Roll Network, Crypto Joe, 242 to the World, Wise Night Owl, Jared Schneider, Triple M and J, Woody and Daisy, Brady Niels, Master Ventures in Thailand, Mohair Moroni, Adam Grasic, Todd Mullis, Bare Bones Mining, A Bibliophobia, The Animal Reader, John Sarson, Mr. Pickles, and Professor Wally from Gunbot University, thank you all very, very much for your support at the moment. The cryptocurrency market is a little out there. Bitcoin, depending on when you look at it, is in the green. And a couple of moments later, it's in the red. The One of the best performing coins in the top 10 is actually XRP for some reason. Uh, this is where it was, it was more so. Uh, it actually reacted to the news of the um, $10 billion, $200 million ripple thingamajig. And one can only assume, I feel like the SBI news may have gone a bit under the rug. Uh, people don't really seem to understand what's significant. Once again, the largest bank in the entire world who's obsessed with XRP has partnered with the second largest stock exchange of an entire country. Right. Prices should have skyrocketed. They, they had a little bump. There was, there was a little something right here. Uh, I think an hour ago, XRP was up around 4%. See, Bitcoin's green again. Uh, was up around 4%. It now says 2.78. I'm going to assume that the if Bitcoin continues to fall further, that the market will also react and also get redder. Every other coin is red. Tezos in the top 10 is also green, but that's because... Mm, Tezos. I don't know how else to really put that. There's so much hype around that coin. Uh, let's see if it holds. Nothing else too insane. Coins that you never hear about anymore are up in price for some reason. Anything else? Not much going on. It's going to be an interesting... What is it? 10 days. I've been reading a couple of articles, as always, and they say... If Bitcoin can pass by or stays above... What is it, 7,200 by the end of this year? It indicates a new bullish trend for the market, and therefore 2020 may be one of the greatest years that we've ever seen in cryptocurrency history. Money, 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 dollar, dollar bills, y'all. All right, that's definitely going to do it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are. Wherever you might be, I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. I hope you enjoy your weekend. 
I hope that this people probably have to go to work on Monday. 22nd, yep, probably, probably. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, if you can find a way to get out of work on Monday and or school, Godspeed to you. Uh, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your time. Have a happy, merry Christmas, holiday, whatever you're celebrating. I hope it's awesome. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.